It was bank holiday morning. The small railway engines were working hard. Their station was crowded. No sooner had one train started than another was filled with people waiting to go. Doc, Oliver, Donald and Douglas were busy, but they had not brought everybody. The yard was full of parked cars and coaches. Doc was waiting for his next turn. Alice and Maribel complained about the heat, so he packed them into the goods shed while he basked outside in the sun. Near him stood a huge red bus. He had never seen it before. The bus watched the passengers happily milling round the small railway. Stupid nonsense, he grumbled. I wouldn't have brought them if I'd known. I would have had a breakdown of something. Well, I'm glad you didn't. You would have spoiled their fun. Look at how they are enjoying themselves. Smile, Tuck. Ha! <laughs> Snowed as a bus. Enjoyment's all you engines live for. Taking the petrol from the tanks of us workers. Come the revolution! He went on fiercely. Railways will be ripped up. Cars and coaches will trample their remains. Free the road! He growled. Free the roads from railway tyranny. At the passing station, Doug told Oliver about the bus. I call him Bulgy. He chuckled. He's painted bright red and shouts down with railways. But next time they met, Oliver didn't laugh. Bulgy's friend has come, he said. He's red and rude too. He's taking Bulgy's passengers home so as to leave him free to steal ours. But he can't. Objected Duck. Ours want to go to the big station. Bulgy bets he can get there before us. Rubbish. It's much further by road. Oliver looked nervously. Yes, but Bulgy says he knows a shortcut. That's it. Donald, Duck and Oliver were preparing for the homebound rush. Duck's train was to be first out, but he had few passengers. He was soon to know why. Look! Trilled Oliver. Look at Bulgy. He's a mean scolded deceiver. Bulgy had turned to leave. They could now see his other side. It had on it. Railway bus. Stop! Yelled the stop and engines. But too late. Yeah, boo, snow. <laughs> Cheers, Bulgy. He rolled away. The unsuspecting passengers wait happily. Oh, come on. Of duck. He, Alice and Maribel, trundled unhappily away. Alice and Maribel chatted grossly. The nasty old thief. He's stolen our people. Duck. He shouted. The line here crosses a narrow road. Duck came as close as he could. So this is Bulgy's shortcut. He chuckled. Bulgy was wedged under the bridge. Drivers of cars trapped in front and behind were telling him what they thought. From time to time, loosened brakes were making Bulgy uh -huh. jump. Bulgy's passengers swarmed around Duck. He tricked us, they complained. He said it was a railway bus, but he wouldn't accept our return tickets. He wanted us to think railways were no good. Please help us. Duck's crew examined the bridge. It's risky, but we must help the passengers. Passengers are urgent, agreed Duck. Besides, he chuckled. It'll pay Bulgy out. They laughed and told the passengers to wait on the other side of the bridge. Drop. Wailed Bulgy. You might fall on me! That, said Duck severely, will serve you right for telling whoppers. Bulgy howled as he felt the bridge quiver, but it didn't collapse. <laughs> Duck went good time to the big station, and all passengers caught their trains. The fat controller arranged a shuttle service on the branch. Passengers changed their trains at Bulgy's bridge. Bulgy had to stay till it was mended, but he never learned sense. He told whoppers till no one could believe his destination boats, and no passengers would travel in him. He's a hen house now, in a field beside the railway. 
If he still tells whoppers, they can do no harm. The hands never listen to them anyways.